Hi guys, it's Sam here today with Bargain Hunting Blonde, and today I am bringing to you more of a chatty video, which is five things I don't like about Chanel. So I did, again, put them on my phone. I'm trying to be good and not write everything down, but like, I hate the phones turn off on me. So first, and this is a big one, and I think a lot of you will agree, the price increases, especially the price increases that have happened with 2020. I think, as we all know, people are going through a lot more difficult times. It's totally a different world. Most of us are still stuck at home, and the price increases just seem insane. I know Chanel has price increases every year, and we all expect that, but the 20 to 25% price increase that happened, I want to say it was June, sometime during the summer, was just insane. That was really, really high. It increased some of the prices on the classics to just unattainable, I would say. And honestly, if prices are that much, I would rather buy Hermes because of the quality issues Chanel has had. If Chanel has stepped up their quality, maybe gone back to gold plated hardware, maybe actually checked bags before they made their way to stores, like it'd be different, but they haven't. And I just think the price increase is just really bad timing. And I mean, I know it's worked for Chanel. People panic buy before they you know, the prices go up. I know people are doing it again because there's another price increase coming, but it's just, it's a bummer, honestly. I think a lot of people dream of Chanel as their ultimate bag and they save and they save and they save and then they almost get there and then the prices go up. And two price increases after you have a 20 to 25% price increase is just insane. So number one for me, the things that I dislike about Chanel are the price increases. I have seen no other brand do it quite like them. I mean, I know Louis Vuitton is like right behind them, but maybe because the Louis Vuitton pieces were canvas, a lot of them and cheaper to begin with, the price increase doesn't seem quite as so insane, but like $7,000, some places $8,000 for a Chanel Jumbo, like to me, honestly, it's not worth it. Like I, I'll just go to Hermes. Number two, and I've had a lot of experience with this, and it's why I don't normally shop in a Chanel boutique and should, sh ugh and shop in Chanel that is in a department store is Rude Sales Associates. I would say that behind Hermes, Chanel has the rudest sales associates. I have had some very rude sales associates who, um, you know, I know sales associates like to a lot of time judge on what you're wearing and stuff like that and how old you look. I look really young. Um, so I get a lot of, you know, people just kind of ignore me, which I don't appreciate. Um, I have been known to leave a store and go to another store that has the same item to buy it just because I don't want to deal with someone who's being rude to me. Like, I try to be really respectful to them. I really, really appreciate all the help they'll give you. I love when you find a good sales associate who's, like, going to give you an honest opinion and be like, you know what, Sam? I don't think you love that. I think we need to wait for this color. Like, I love that. I want an actual opinion. I don't want to buy something that I don't love. And I, I want someone who's like, you know, that doesn't necessarily look good on you. I think this would look better. I'm totally open to that. And I just feel like with Chanel, a lot of their sales associates just are really rude and just don't want to seem to not want to help people, even though that's their job. And, you know, I do know that they're difficult customers and I totally understand that. But like most people, I would say, are not difficult customers and are spending a lot of money. So they don't want a crooked flap. Crazy on their Chanel classic flat bag that's costing them $7,000. So I just, I've had a lot of run-ins. I actually, at the Chanel in Zurich, um, I think I pray that it was a language barrier issue because I do not speak German or French and those are the two like primary languages in Zurich. But the, my friend and I, um, who are the same age, went to law school together. Uh, she works in London for a big firm. I work in Palo Alto for a big law firm. And they actually wouldn't even let us in. As you know, it's snowing outside. We want to go shopping. We're carrying around Louis Vuitton shopping bags as that's where we had just been. And I have a great Louis Vuitton sales associate in Zurich. And they just wouldn't even let us in. There was no one in the, like, the store wasn't closed. There wasn't a ton of people in the store. Um, yeah, it was, it was really weird. He, and it, how he said it wasn't just, it wasn't like, oh, I'm so sorry, you know, like, kind of sort of thing. It was like, just rude. Like, we don't want you in here. Um, needless to say, I have never bought anything at Chanel in Zurich. So, Rude Sales Associates, I do not like, and I understand, you know, they're, maybe they're having a bad day, but, like, we all have bad days, and, like, I deal with people who sometimes ask crazy things of me all the time, and you just have to be like, yes, yeah, sure, of course, even though you're like, oh my god, you just asked me to do something in one hour that literally takes ten days, but we're gonna try. So, I just don't love that, and I feel like when you're spending the amount of money a Chanel now costs, they should be nice to you. Like, Take a lesson from Dior. I think Dior has like the nicest sales associates. Three, the charge send rule, which I didn't know was a rule until this beautiful pandemic happened. So I, like I said, I have a tendency 
to buy Chanel from department store boutiques. That is partially because I find that a lot of the sales associates are nicer, and that's partially because the closest Chanel to me is actually located in Neiman Marcus in Palo Alto. So that's normally where I go if I'm going to be purchasing Chanel and I'm not in Europe. Well, I learned that I that their accounts are not all attached like they are for Louis Vuitton, so I have a purchase history in France um, with Chanel, and then I have a purchase history from Bergdorf's with Chanel, and then Neiman Marcus with Chanel. But because Neiman and Bergdorf's are like a weird leased sort of boutique, I cannot actually order anything from a standalone Chanel boutique because my Chanel sales record is in Europe. So... I found a piece during the pandemic and I was like, oh my gosh, from a Chanel sales associate, like a standalone boutique. I'd love that piece. I'd want to buy it. And I couldn't because I do not have a sales history with a standalone Chanel boutique. And I get that they do this because of fraud issues and stuff like that, but we're in a pandemic. Most stores by me just opened. And even when they're open, they're open very short hours and they are open only with you normally having a connection to be able to make an appointment. So Chanel, how do you expect to sell things to people if they cannot buy them? Like, I just think it's very weird. And I, you know, I understand that they're trying to combat fraud, but like we're kind of living in a different time. So maybe we should kind of change everything that's going on. I'd be totally fine if they're like, you know, we can only send to the billing address and not to another address because my billing address is in the East Bay. Fine. Like, I, someone is there to get the package, and I will end up in the, out in the East Bay one of these weekends, and then I just go pick it up. Like, that's totally fine. But I think the charge send rule with everything that's going on with the pandemic, with so many boutiques closed, needs to be changed. Four. And this one is just kind of my pet peeve because of my foot size. So, shoe sizing at Chanel drives me insane because some shoes come in half sizes and some shoes do not come in half sizes. And I think we just need to pick a lane and stick to it. Like shoe sizes either need to be half sizes or you only do whole sizes. So my problem is in my Chanel ballet flats and my Chanel slingbacks, I wear a 41.5. But in all the other shoes, I actually have to get a 42 because the 41 is a little too small. I do have one foot that is bigger than the other, which a lot of people do, but mine are a little more go with the word aggressive because I did have um, growth plate injuries on my ankle from a car accident when I was younger. And so I have like a pretty significant, almost like a half size for one foot versus the other. And then, so I need to go with the 42, but then a 42 is pretty big and I have narrow feet. So some of the shoes like slip off of my feet. So I have been lucky with like the espadrilles still fit, but then I've tried on other shoes that are whole sizes that like I cannot wear. So Chanel, please just either pick, we're all going to do whole sizes and I just have to deal with it, or we're going to do half sizes and I love you. So let's pick one and stick to it because it gets confusing when you're trying to buy shoes and you don't necessarily always get to go try them on. Again, the times we're living in, you can't always make it to the store, especially depending on where you live. And then lastly, this one drives me insane. Please, Chanel, have an online website that we can purchase your goods from that are not just makeup. Everyone, I mean, Hermes has it. Hermes has it. Granted, you're not going to find a Birkin or Kelly on there most of the time, but like a lot of other coveted bags you will find on there and you can purchase and they come to your house and it's great. Chanel, please get a website where we can order your shoes and where we can order your handbags. I would love that. And then lastly, this is six. I said, no, I only said five, but this is like an honorable mention. The lack of information and naming of Chanel items also drives me insane. I mean, we, for example, I'll put it up on the screen. We have the, what I call, O case, but other people call O pouch, which Chanel has not actually named, so none of us know what it is actually called. I would love for Chanel to explain <laughs> when I get confused, and I've had it explained to me before, like 19A, 19B, 20K, like, what are all those numbers? Please explain it to me. I'm confused, and I know one is cruise, one is pre-fall, one is fall act one, one is fall act two, but I get confused. So if Chanel could just like streamline things and actually name their pieces and then explain to us the different seasons or just re refer to them by like pre-fall, fall act one, fall act two, that'd be great and be a lot less confusing to me. And I've been buying Chanel for a long time and I'm still confused. So that's like an honorable mention, more of a pet peeve of mine is just the lack of information Chanel has around their pieces and what they're named. I know, you know, like I get really confused and I know a lot of us who are in the luxury community, we've kind of named them ourselves. Like I am pretty sure that O-Case and O-Pouch are completely something created by the Lux community as I don't think I've ever had a sales associate refer to it as that. Um, they just refer to it as like a Chanel pouch. 
sort or like a case um or chanel small leather good so those are my five pet peeves or things i dislike about chanel let me know down below if you guys have any if you have any that i mentioned that you just really want to harp on because they really bother you i'd love to hear it i know you know we all kind of have our little pet peeves but recently chanel is just getting to me and irking me if you like this sort of video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you get notified every time i upload a new video which is twice a week if you want to see how i style my bags please make sure to follow me on instagram facebook and my blog all of which are linked down below thank you so so much for tuning in today guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!